sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. We have a liftoff. Doom Nation, what's up? We are back once again uh, with another podcast. Is As always, Skaggs and your captain. And Skaggs, where are you tonight? I'm in Washington, D.C. You will never <laughs> find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. That's where I am today. You're in the den, the wolf's den. Most most icily, as Obi-Wan yeah. ventured yeah. to. So, uh, Doom Nation, thank you guys for joining us again. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we had a great conversation last week with uh, Professor Giordano. That was last week, right? That was last week, yeah. Yeah, and this Steve. is the weekend. Skaggs yeah. and I had too crazy of a weekend. Shout out to Big Mark and Stephanie. Um, but, yeah, this was a fun weekend, and now we're back at it, and the craziness continues. Yeah, it never ends. No. We got today, we got our, you know, we had our celebration when uh, Governor Cuomo resigned. You know, we popped champagne. We had a good time. The party's over. (laughs) Party is over, New Yorkers. Because Governor Hochul, Kathy Hochul, she's gone insane. So we're going to talk about her. Uh, I want to also talk about uh, Julian Assange, the I guess it's like the founder of WikiLeaks, and uh, there was a CIA plot to assassinate him, which is interesting. Uh, that's like a, a huge, huge topic, a huge story that just got glazed over because of everything else that's going on, and oh, because it's all the good goes, ones do. and because it goes against the establishment, so nobody wants to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so those are the two main things I want to talk about, and then whatever you got as usual. Uh, yeah, we're going to be talking, uh, I'll be talking about the border crisis because it's not in control. So, <laughs> yeah, the uh, you know what, to start with that, uh, a lot was made. Yeah, we'll start with that. Why not? Right. A lot was made about the uh, Border Patrol agents like whipping the, the Haitian um, migrants. That's completely fake. That didn't happen. Yeah. They were using the, the reins to like move their uh, horses around. And if you watch the full video, which the photographer who took those photos himself put up and was like, they weren't whipping anybody. Yep. They were just trying to like tell them to go back, stop, you can't cross. They didn't hit or whip anybody. So that was completely fake news. And, uh, and I think the president even alluded to that, saying that, you know, something along the lines of like him acknowledging that they did whip them when it was completely not true. Oh, yeah. Biden Biden sold the whole story. He is, I'm pretty sure it tried to go out on a limb and say he's banning whips from the from a, they banned the use of horses for, yeah, for them now. Yeah. And those guys, those guys, those agents are uh, on desk duty now. Like they're yeah. in trouble. Yeah. They didn't even fucking and, do anything. <laughs> and anybody from here on out who acts up will be reprimanded to the fullest extent. This is such a wild situation to be perfect. I'm going to start off with my opinion of what should happen. Scorched earth, every border patrol agent, full blown strike, walk off top to bottom, leave the border completely. Just, you don't, you know, you don't want us here. You're not going to let us come even close to doing our job. You're not interested in making this better, even for the, you know, fine. We have this open border and this immigration uh, policy and platform. This is in, This isn't a good situation for the people trying to get into the country either. You know what I mean? Like, yay, let's be virtuous. We want to welcome everyone with open arms. But what they're going through isn't any better. You know what I mean? Like this this welcome mat is really just, you know, like a barbed wire fence, if you think of it. If they still yeah. go, they're still stuck under that bridge. I was just saying, it can't be comfortable to be sitting no. under a fucking no. bridge in Texas in like scorching heat. 
that you know so like i said i think the border patrol agents should all just walk off and just leave it uh either that or someone needs to stop taking orders and just only take state orders which i guess would be considered a mutiny but it's it's gone completely out of control is if any if tomorrow a a border patrol officer is seen picking up a kid from the ground it's going to say you know border patrol are now separating kids from the pan meanwhile he's picking up some kid that was you know it doesn't matter what the story is as long as the pitcher can sell it then he'll be on desk duty as well yeah i mean i see what you're saying like almost in spite of the administration they yeah. should just all go on strike but you know tinfoil hat time don't you think that might be what the administration wants then they have their scapegoat for why the situation is so bad at the border. Well, it's because the border patrol went on strike. And at the same time, now you can have just as many people as you want come in. And uh, that's this is the end result. Anyway, they're just busing people into whatever state they want to be bussed into. You know, so, you know, let's give let's give the left every victory they wanted when Trump was in office. The wall's too expensive. The wall's racist. The wall's this whatever virtuous thing you felt in negativity against the wall fine i'll give it to you you won the argument but is shoving thousands of people in an underbridge shanty town really the the answer is this you know what i mean like is this the better of the two options neither option is working you know what i mean yeah so this your your moral high ground has people shoved under and a bridge and if you don't think kids are in cages you're dead wrong. The cages are so full that they have to put people in this bridge shanty town. Right. Literally. Yeah. So you can't tell me that that this idea was the better option. Yeah. It just shows the inefficiency of government, too. You oh, know, they, yeah. they can't even if they want to let people in, they can't even do that right. Uh, what, what's crazy about the border situation is man, this has been a problem forever, a situation yeah. forever. And, and there's no meaningful discussion attempt anything in order to like make it a process that works no. for us for the migrants for for everybody you know yeah. they just nothing there's nothing from the government just it's it's always a, a clusterfuck no I, matter what I, and i mean there's so many i'm i'm sure there's so many ideas out there other ideas out there that we don't even know about that could easily be applied you know i'm sure dave smith or, or even professor giordano or someone has some type of a spin of an idea of what we could do no, we're, this administration doesn't like Border Patrol, so we're going to abuse the Border Patrol agents. This administration doesn't like immigrants, so we're going to make it harder and abuse the immigrants. No one's winning. No, oh, I've, he- he- I've heard uh, I've heard Dave's uh, idea on it. And his idea is, well, you should be able to volunteer to sponsor a, a, a migrant if you yeah. want. If you want to be so virtuous and you, uh, you know, you want to help people, you can. You can offer to sponsor somebody, bring them into your house. Help them get on their feet, pay for them. But we not shouldn't be, but we should, those people are not going to do that though. You know, no. the AOC is not going to bring a migrant into her house. But at the same time, she's going to volunteer your tax dollars to help no. pay for them, right? Like it's robbing from the commons to, to support something you want, even if that thing is good or not. Like you should, that should, it should maybe be a more volunteer, volunteerism method to yeah. it, I guess you could say. Um, you know, the, the interesting thing about this uh me and you have been beating around the bush talking about this but uh we spoke about this a few a month or two ago that th- these uh this new like migration is coming from haiti oh, and yeah. we spoke about it how the assassination of the president of haiti was suspicious to begin with uh there was those mercenaries or guys who got caught some of them spoke american and said that they worked i forgot what they said something like they worked special ops or, or something yeah. For the American, some yeah, shit, yeah. something like that. I I forget exactly. Uh, you know, so we were we were suspicious about that. Did we maybe knock the guy off? You know, we've spoken about in the past how many times the United States has thrown overthrown governments or tried to meddle and interfere in Southern American affairs, destabilize countries that causes poverty, political chaos, civil war, crime, and then people flee because people don't want to die. I don't blame any of these people for wanting to flee you know terrible conditions i i really do feel bad for them it sucks uh you know what i mean so, but it's just fucking suspicious on top of the fact that the, haiti is an island and it's not anywhere near texas so how did they if they if they landed in 
Florida. Like if they were coming up in Florida on boats or or whatever, that'd make more sense. Florida's pretty close. Texas is like hundreds and hundreds of miles away from there. Yeah. And you have to, you know, and they're coming by land. It's not like and, they're and on yeah. So I was gonna say if they if they want to say that they're being, you know, by they're taking boats, the Corpus Christi eastern coast of Kine- of uh Texas is way closer than closer the than, border. Right, where <laughs> where this is happening, right? It's yeah. not anywhere near even that. Dude, you know, conspiracy theory time. Yeah, yeah. tinfoil hat place, time. Let's go. Really? To go with this, yeah, it's the only place yeah. we can go. I mean, A, let's be real. They're being transported there. You know? There was some they, they have to have they have to have either been flown or, you know, yeah. by by Marine ship, did. by big ship, yeah. whatever, however they've been transported, it's gonna cost money. A lot of oh, yeah. it too. Yeah. So but, yeah. I mean they human traffic people in shipping containers, so they I could very easily do the same thing. But other tinfoil hat thing, what if Im- Mexican and Southern American immigration has gone down recently? Let's just say I won't give Trump credit, but let's say Trump made it harder. But there's so many people here already. And there's everybody. What does everybody usually do? They send money back home. What if it's starting to level off where the all the people that wanted to get across the border at by any means necessary are already here. And the families that are back home have been getting sent money for long enough now that things are getting kind of OK there. And the immigration numbers are actually going down. So they're busing in people from around the world to keep the issue alive. Maybe uh, that's not impossible. Yeah, it's a good theory. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you think about it, if there's 10 families that came here illegally and they're, they've been sending money back to their family in Mexico for the past 10 years, it might eventually level off when right. this guy got they're well, they're, right. They're well off enough. Yeah. And uh, there'll be nobody, you know, what's the point then? You, 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 a lot of like a lot of uh, Mexican immigrants that I've worked with before, like they do send money back, but and like their goal is event is like to support their family back there. Yeah buy property, build, you know, build a house and, you know, eventually go back and retire in their country yeah. and live like a comfortable life. I, so, so maybe, I, uh, yeah, maybe yeah. some of them have accomplished that and they're in like that equilibrium status. Yeah, the right. numbers, the numbers could be changing and God knows the government runs this entire country based off of whatever numbers they can produce. You know, yeah. COVID numbers, <clears throat> gun violence numbers, whatever they need to push to get done, they'll figure out how to make the numbers. I wouldn't be surprised. I have another uh, interesting conspiracy theory on this too, which I'm not sure maybe you've heard. I was listening to this guy Ed Calderon. He's a uh, expert on like Mexico and the narcos and um, immigration and stuff like that. And you know, he was talking a lot about the narcos and how they're basically their own Super little intelligent. They're, okay. Yeah, they're also basically like their own little tiny governments within Mexico, like that you know, work Mexican- with our government. Maybe not even, but he he was saying, you know, they have been known to have conversations with Chinese authorities and, uh, you know, maybe they're getting funding behind the scenes from China and China's using them to, you know, sort of traffic people into America to help further destabilize the country, destabilize the border, put strain on our economy, uh, you know, and at the same time, giving them money to do it because it takes a lot of money, like we said before, to transport all those people who's got a lot of money. The narcos, oh, right? They're probably well, well. The narcos do too, and they're operating yeah. in Mexico to begin with. So you know, I, I don't rule that out either. There could be some, you know, Chinese CIA covert ops behind all this thing that's well, you know working that's- together with the narcos to to keep you know they're keeping the pressure on America because we're under extreme amount of fucking pressure right now. I I fully believe, and this comes from another conspiracy theory that the U.S. government is in bed completely with the cartel. Uh, and that MS-13 pulls off hits for them. Uh, El Chapo, the biggest, you know, cartel boss ever. He's been on trial for years now. I don't even know if the trial ended or not. But as we saw with the big uh, O.J. Simpson case, and they're nowhere near the same two type of people, we got 24-hour coverage of that. You can't even find a tweet about what's going on with the, with the El Chapo case. What if he's pointing fingers? What if he's dropping names or whatever? But also, the, like you said, the cartels are their own government and they're intelligent. Yeah. What if we cause a problem over here so we could get the drugs in over here? Where if all of Border Patrol 
is in that one section, it's got to be way easier yeah. in other well, sections. Well, car- cartels are famous for doing that, even yeah. giving up giving up shipments, uh, you know, in one spot. Like you know, send a uh, send a boat with all you know ten pounds of uh, you know or, or a one ton of coke on it, and yeah. let it get purposefully you know seized because you're going to draw all the attention away, and then you send the other boat with a hundred yeah. tons uh, or whatever whatever of uh, coke through it. Yeah, to dis- distract, delay. You know, it's I mean, it's it's possible. It's- that's how much of a shit show it is down there. And we literally have a president who can care less about it. Well, he's, can... he's more busy, you know, restricting freedom amongst his own people. Yeah. So he don't got yeah. time for that. Yeah, Freedom yeah. for others. But I mean, at a certain point too, you got to look at like, if you like, if you really like, if you're from Cuba, like I know America is the last resort, but like you keep seeing stuff like this, you're going to like, shit, where else can we go? <laughs> Yeah. You know what's interesting? We haven't heard it a fucking lick out of Cuba since uh, oh, that yeah, whole situation yeah. went down, I mean, right? Those, well, what happened was the communists completely shut it down. Yeah. The regime yeah. quieted it down, shut it down, probably disappeared who they needed to. And, you know, no, yeah, there's no internet, nothing in there coming in and out. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think Biden actually mentioned something about Cuba at the uh, UN meeting, but I didn't. I've really been, you know, just sick up to my eyeballs with government lately. I can't even I don't even want to hear like what Trump has to say anymore right now. Uh, I'm just so done with so many people. You're on your way to becoming an anarchist. Like uh, most of the libertarians are. uh, Yeah, I just I'm sick of a lot of it, man. Hey, Doom Nation, it's Gags here. And thank you for joining us for another episode of Two Doom Men. If you like what we are about, help us spread the message by subscribing to our channels and sharing the show with your friends. That's the best way we can get around big tech's algorithms. You can also help support the work we do by subscribing to our Patreon account at patreon.com slash two doom men, or by going to linktree.com slash two doom men. That will bring you to everywhere our show has a presence. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the show. Um, all right, let's get into, uh, unless you want anything else, say anything else on that. I was going to say, let's get no, into uh, no, Governor Hopeful here. No, it's just, it's a here. shit show. And meat and no potatoes than, of this episode. Yeah. So I'm going to share my screen here. One second. So I'm going to start here with Governor Hochul. And uh, she's been in the news a lot lately. And she's kind of been rapid firing a lot of vaccine COVID mandate stuff. So foreign workers could replace New York's unvaccinated hospital, nursing home staffers, Governor Hochul. Nearly 20% of workers at hospitals and nursing homes who refuse to get vaccinated COVID-19 will be replaced potentially by foreigners once the state's mandate goes into effect next week, which was yesterday at this point, uh, Governor Hochul said. Uh, To those who won't, we'll be replacing people. And I have a plan that's going to be announced very shortly, which we're going to go into next. Uh, We're also going to be reaching out to the Department of State to find out about visas for foreign workers on a limited basis. Uh, to bring more nurses over here. So before we really get into this stuff, because this is going to be a major tinfoil hat time topic, um, this is a classic example of something me and you have said millions and millions of times. Government creates the problem, and then they sell themselves as the answer to the problem yep. they created. The reason why New York is is uh, facing a potential shortage in school bus drivers, and more importantly, in nurses, is because they're mandating that Everybody takes a vaccine with basically no exceptions, no uh, consideration for natural immunity. They're telling you, you got to take the vaccine or take a hike. The heroes of last year are the unemployed of this year. And I looked it up. If you are fired for refusing to get vaccinated, you will not be eligible for unemployment insurance Um, unless unless you're able to provide a valid doctor approved request for uh, like a, you, you couldn't get vaccinated because uh, you had a medical reason, but they'll still fire you anyway. It don't even fucking matter if you have a medical uh, reason. They'll still fire you. So yeah, you'll be you'll I, be ineligible, ineligible for unemployment. I said this for a long time ago that if you get fired because of the vaccine, you won't be eligible for unemployment. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, otherwise, you know, this mandate it, it went into effect yesterday, right? So I mean, I'm not sure exactly what the deal is, how many people are getting fired or whatnot. I'm sure as the weeks and days go on, we'll we'll, we'll see. Now also uh, the teachers, uh, all teachers and staff have to be vaccinated by uh, this Friday or get fired. The the deadlines are coming. I do know uh, I have here that the Civil Service Employees Association, 
members of the New York State Correctional Officers and P PBA and a group of medical workers are among those who have filed lawsuits challenging the state's vaccine yes. mandates. <clears throat> so it is possible that those could go up to, you know, New York State Supreme Court and uh, yeah. the mandates could be overruled. I think it's going to have to, but um, because this is super unconstitutional. There's no legislative oversight, uh, no congressional oversight. And they, the entire frontline work staff worked f very well last. I'm not going to say that, you know, last year wasn't a shit show, but they worked unvaccinated through the worst of the worst of this. Yeah, the actual were, worst part at yes. the very beginning. Yeah. And, you know, to show that we are going in the wrong direction, it's now getting to the point where the government doesn't have to do this. They're choosing to do yes. this. Yes. They're choosing to overstep these unprecedented boundaries that no one in the history, George Washington up to Donald Trump, including Trump, never overstepped their boundaries like this before, you know? It's 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 starting to go so far left, we'll say, that it's unnecessary. What's going on in Australia, they don't need to be arresting people in the streets for not wearing masks. They're choosing yeah. it. You know? Forget about arresting them to do in Australia. Yeah, straight up ass assaulting military-aged males. Don't yeah. don't think I haven't noticed that. That oh, it's yeah. all it's the tradies, guys, middle-aged working dudes. Yeah. They're they're targeting people like that. My opinion on what they should do in Australia would get this show taken down for good. Yeah. I mean, uh, we'll keep that for private yeah. conversation. But uh but there's no there's no need for this. They're they're choosing to do this. So that means there is some plan and I don't want to say anything to ru maybe ruin your next point that the next story you wanted to get into. But yeah, it, this is it's going way too far now. Yeah. Well, well, let's get to the next point, right? I'm gonna, sh yeah. I'm gonna screen share again, and we're gonna play you some videos of our dear governor here speaking, and uh, she is talking about some of the plans she mentioned in the pre previous article. And we will be nation leading with our mandate, which strikes at midnight tonight, when everyone is expected in the hospital in the state of New York or a healthcare facility. You have been vaccinated. I will be signing an executive order to give me the emergency powers necessary to address the shortages where they occur. That's going to allow me to deploy the National Guard who are medically trained, deploy people uh, who've been retired and may have had a license lapse, bring in people from elsewhere. That is not my first position of my friend. My, my, my desire is to have the people who've been out there continue to work in their jobs, work in them safely, and to all the other healthcare workers who are vaccinated, they also deserve to know that the people they're working with will not get them sick. And we'll be nation leading with our... Um, all right. What's, what's the most insane about this is if you caught it towards the very beginning. She goes, I'm going to sign an executive order to give myself the power to deploy the National Guard. So, like you said before, completely circumventing the New York State leg legislature, you know, like the New York State Congress. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to sign an order which gives me more power to deploy soldiers to do the jobs of people in the private sector that I'm firing because they didn't comply with another order that I decreed from my castle upon high. That is literally what she's saying. And, and she said, oh, this isn't my first option. Yeah. Well, you're, you're starting with this, so it is number one. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I think she meant in terms of the what we, we mentioned before. Yeah, she's going to try and vaccinated. bring in, uh, you know, she's also going to, well, yeah, she wants everybody to get vaccinated. So that's yeah. like one of the options. Another one of the options is to bring in immigrants on visas that are nurses yeah. and have them do the jobs, which that is not even, that's not realistic either. Or she was saying, you know, we're going to, you know, she's kind of alluding that we're going to make more nurses. You don't just snap your fingers and create nurses in a day that's a long arduous process of schooling and work for you to get you know be like a li licensed uh now, medical worker hear me out what if they're just putting their people that they need to be in place in place well what that's what tinfoil hat time is for but yeah what if what if too many nurses are waking up and saying x y and z and facebook and instagram and you too youtube doesn't uh doesn't want anybody to hear about x y and z so now we'll get some foreign worker will you know threaten their entire life on it mm -hmm. and you do as you're told come
comply, comply, comply. If you don't comply, we'll find somebody who will. Yeah. Another interesting uh, little comment she had there was, you know, uh, the the vaccinated workers, you know, they uh, they deserve yeah. to know that their their coworkers are not putting them at risk. I mean, the rhetoric to divide people um, amongst vaccination status, it, it's not only President Fascist Biden, it's now the governor. We've seen so many politicians say it. I mean, and we're talking about people who work in fucking hospitals that are treating people with COVID-19. Like, if you're in a hospital, you're probably, and you're uh, uh, like a healthcare worker, you're and you get COVID, it's going to most likely come from one of the people that have COVID-19 and are in the hospital, hospitalized yeah. with COVID-19. Not the workers that are working there that are completely healthy and have nothing to do with the scenario. But they keep making sure, they force you in that little divisive statement to try and get the vaccinated people who are, you know, stubborn and want to control and rule everybody to be like, yeah, fuck those people. Fuck them, you know? If they don't do what they want, they're putting my life in jeopardy. Because when, you, when you're afraid, when you think your life is in jeopardy, you're looking for like who whose fault is it? Yeah. You're looking to scapegoat somebody. Yeah. So that that rhetoric is everywhere, and that's not by accident. Those are not off the cuff remarks. That is fucking yeah. planned, dude. Project Mockingbird. On top of it, once again, people are arguing that the vaccine doesn't really work that well. <laughs> yeah. You know, if your vac, you know, I always say this when somebody you know starts going at me with this. You have a mask on. Why are you worried about my mask? And you are vaccinated. Yeah. Why? If your vaccine works, I am no threat to you. It's it. That's how a vaccine with a virus works. Yeah. <laughs> and again, not to mention, they're completely not taking into account any natural antibodies you may yes. have produced. They're yes. not saying, you know, we should test. You know, they're they're literally saying it doesn't matter. If you have natural antibodies, which is proven to be is just about stronger, everyone. proven also to be stronger than the vaccine's immunity yep. uh, that is provided. So it's not about science. It's about compliance. It's about get the vaccine because we need to make sure we can pad those profits for, for pharma and, uh, you know, for Pfizer, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, good. Uh, I forgot where we were going now with that. Well, let me go to my tinfoil hat time with this. You know, we've been alarmist over the course of the months here on this podcast, and we're quick to compare everything to Nazi Germany and the end of the world and everything. But you literally now have the governor of New York is going to mobilize soldiers. I know they're medical soldiers, they're National Guard, they're medic, but she's going to mobilize soldiers to take the health care jobs of normal citizens who are supposed to be charged with your health care. How, how, how far, how, what's the right word for this? How far-fetched is it to think that she or another governor who does the same thing or the president or whoever the fuck crackpot dictator is in charge somewhere down the road is going to give that order to those soldiers and say, you're not treating any unvaccinated patients that come yeah. into this, uh, ho these hospitals that you're working in right now. Not until... You know, we get a 98, 99 percentage of the population vaccinated, like President Biden said the other day. Then things could go back Which, to normal. So, let uh, me. yeah. But I mean, think about that. Think about that. You're you're you're, you're taking the private sector, the free market, yeah. completely out of it, and replacing the workers with soldiers. Now, we're getting closer, dude. Closer to the Soviet Union, to to the way that yeah. you know Kim Jong Un runs his shit, because they don't have they didn't have any free markets. They relied on you know. The, the military to step in everywhere. I don't know, dude. I, you know, I know we sound alarmist most of the time, but how crazy is that? It's it's very plausible to think because I I mean sooner or later they've all they've warned us. The government will always tell you that what it's going to do before it does it. And they said we're done with the carrot. It's time for the stick. And from here on out. The stick's only going to get bigger. And eventually the stick will be so big where, all right, there's no more doctors in the hospital. There's only there's only the uh, you know, military personnel that we choose to put there. You know, we choose who to run. And now, you know, we cut off medicine. The IRS getting control of everybody's bank accounts. You don't think that's going to lead to some type of social credit system? You don't think that I always said it's going to be a real fun day when the ATM asks you to scan your, your vaccination passport because eventually they'll shut off your money. 
they they already said we have the power to throw you out of your your job now they're saying we could just write in the power to bring in the military to do your job the money's going to go next the food will ev- i mean in paris in france they are you have to have a vaccine passport to go grocery shopping the president chose to starve his people if they don't choose what he wants them to do yeah the money will eventually go you'll see a lot of problems yeah yeah it's it's at this point we could say you know i we've made the point that it's it's poor management it's poor legislation you know like it's it's very poor policy that they're setting in place which it is right like we said before they're ma- they're making a problem and then they're coming back and solving and it, present themselves as the as the answer the solution right but are they doing this shit on purpose maybe it's so bad right it's so bad like the policy is so bad you have to entertain that yeah. this is the great yeah. reset the, the world economic forum the davos guys that this is more than just this is the tinfoil hat shit right yeah. you have to entertain that because it's so obvious how bad some of these decisions are i i always said one day people are going to start praying q was real all right and it's i mean you look at what's going on you got to think every time they don't get their way they just take more power you know what i mean we've watched game of thrones we've watched all you know the the cartel stuff power corrupts and we've proven time and time again that there's corruption we have receipts on it we knew there was corruption before we started this podcast we knew there was corruption back in 2006 you know what i mean like i'd say we didn't know the 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 depth the depth corruption yeah that's that's moved my political opinion you know doing this podcast for all these months and like doing a lot of research and finding out how deep the shit goes you know getting so red-pilled has moved my personal political opinions a lot over the course of doing the yeah. yeah yeah like yeah. It, you you keep we, we've been just eating red pills you, yeah. b- bowls bowls of them with the bed two I, yeah. yeah you know i was actually thinking to myself though like because like i said earlier like i'm just so done i i, I don't want to listen to anybody about this shit i, I just want to see like rock and roll time like we it's it's clear it's here like we got to do something needs to be done someone needs to be held accountable somewhere and you know, I was like, you know, it's almost like a, a curse that like we got to see behind the curtain at what goes on because people like some of our friends who are just blissfully ignorant of this have it way better, <laughs> way better. Yeah, they're going to pay more in taxes. Yeah, they have no idea why. Yes, this is exactly how we got to this point. Mm-hmm. Well, but dude, it's that's a, it's a horror story behind yeah. the curtain. Bro, I, I just rewatched The Matrix. Uh, last week or a week before with Shane, she never watched. I'm it afraid to watch it. I'm and, afraid uh, to watch it. You know that's this is that's why we keep everybody keeps referencing the blue pill red pill choice, right? Because yeah. when you go back and watch it, you know Neo's presented the opportunity. You could take the red pill and you go down the rabbit hole and you know the truth behind everything, or you could take the blue pill and you wake up, you go back in Neverland and you know everything was great. And as you watch that movie, as you know, as the movie progresses, there's there's even uh, I forget his name, but uh, he there's the other character who attacks uh, everybody and starts like unplugging them. He makes a deal with the agents to be put back into the matrix because he realizes it was better to just be not know what was going on and be living. Ignorance is bliss, I yeah, believe that's he why says. I said, right, blissfully ignorant. So so yeah, some people do feel that way. Like uh, they'd rather not know anything, and they'd yeah. be you know had they have their cat memes and their <laughs> Xbox. And whatever, not me though. I, I'd rather know the truth. If if you did, if we were living in the Matrix and machines were, you know, ruled the world, I'd rather know the truth and live a miserable, hard life and try and fight back. And yeah. and I'd rather live in reality than live in a fucking simulation, a yeah, well, false simulation. We're not, we're not living in reality, that's for sure. Because well, you know, with this, whole, what you know, just to go back to what we were talking about with uh, Hanchu or whatever the hell her name is, um, <laughs> Hanchu. I still don't. I still don't know how to properly pronounce it. Nobody's like really told me, and I haven't really. I gotta be honest with you. Yeah, I'm saying Hokel, but I could yeah, be wrong too. Hokel, I don't even know. There we go. Um, you know, she literally decided, yes, we'll fire people, and this is going to create an emergency, so I could declare and write in a state of emergency, like, you know, like circular logic. Yeah, there. Like we started our podcast with saying like. The government will never let a good crisis go to waste. 
And then I said, you know, well, they'll, then it gives them the reason to create a crisis. Now they're creating a crisis in real time in front of everyone. Yeah, not they're, even like it's not even a surprise anymore. They're creating shortages of labor, shortages of product, shortages of food. You know, and, and if you also think about it, it also demolishes my tactic from a few months ago when I said every nurse should just walk out. If if every nurse and doctor walked out of a hospital, what do you have? A big building full of sick people. You're effed. You know what I mean? But now, if if an entire if there was a big enough group in some hospital somewhere that said, no, we're going to walk off. We're not going to do this. What's the governor going to do? Emergency. I have more right. power now. Send the National Guard. Yeah, the, pre the, the precedent, like we were talking about with Nick, yeah. it's been sent, you know? And uh, I wanted to make the point, man, like if they just ended the restrictions on everything, you know, left everybody up to freedom of choice, stop politicizing the virus, stop trying to force everybody to do it, you know, to do what they want you to do, open up the markets, the economy would recover, people's mindset would recover. You got to get rid of a couple people like Fauci, there's got to be some accountability. And people would just address the virus with common sense on like a person to person basis. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need anybody. Joe Biden, Kathy Hochul, whatever, to tell me how to behave like when I have my child in a few months. You know what I mean? I, I don't need you to mandate anything for me. I'm going to use common sense and do it. And if people don't use common sense, then they'll reap what they sow. And that's their, their fault. If They've charged, they've politically charged the situation so much that there is no way to like logically address it anymore. It's, it's too far gone. Politically charged? Bro, this is... Like, this is unprecedented. Who in the history of this country has done any form of this type of overreach? You know, it, it was there maybe like the 16th president or one of these no-name presidents that people never think of? Did maybe he or, you know, do something like that? But as far as I could tell from all the history classes I took, that the last time this happened, it didn't turn out well. You yeah. Know? <laughs> people say, you know, a lot of the libertarians I listen to, they hate Abraham Lincoln surprise really? and you think why do why would people hate abraham lincoln you know, like he was a fucking dictator the south yeah. you know wanted to secede you know it's uh what is it like you have your right to uh freedom of association and yeah. the south was like we don't want to be associated with you anymore and uh, the, uh, and they've they you know there's some libertarians view uh lincoln as a dictator who wouldn't allow them to express their right to secession no. their right of association and uh Basically, fought a whole war with, you know, your yeah. your your men. Of course, there was obviously the issue of slavery and the economic issues of the day as well to factor in. I think sometimes libertarians are a little bit too like ideologically mindset, pure, like yeah. like their their mindset is too like pure ideology ideal ideology. I can't even say the word, <laughs> but um, you have to sometimes live in the real world, and you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, ideologies are only going to get you so far, you know. Well, I mean, look, the, you know, the entire progressive left, you know, is by an ideology of the moral high ground. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but their their society will collapse. You can only okay. ignore uh, reality for so long. Was it in um, that uh, HBO documentary uh, about Chernobyl? They had the famous quote in there. It's like, every lie we tell incurs okay. a debt to the truth. And eventually that bill is going to come due. That's just yeah. like they did in, in Chernobyl. They kept lying, they kept lying, they kept lying. People get sick, they die. You have an international incident on your hands. Same thing with this. You can keep trying to fill people's jobs with it's, National Guard. You could yeah. try and like use your government. You could keep printing more money in order to pay the bills. That's gonna that bill's gonna come due one day, and it's not gonna be pretty when it does. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were saying you know, you reap what you sow and Oh my God, I'm terrible tonight. Where are we going with this? I'm oh, sorry, about everybody. Chernobyl. Oh yeah, and incurring, uh, yeah, the incurring a debt to the truth. Yes. Fuck. I completely. Every every lie oh, told oh, incurs. Oh, hopefully, debt to the truth. hopefully the truth comes out sooner than later. Because it, it does. Bit. We're gonna get to more truth later in this episode, but it does. How many how many stories have we we covered that yeah. are things we said sounded like conspiracy, and then months later the truth came out? The Capitol riot. Yeah. The, uh, you know, the kidnapping of Gretchen Whitmore. There are so many fucking things we've spoken about. Yeah, yeah what were you going to say? Uh, no, so uh, something I found out about uh, Hochul, apparently her daughter-in-law 
is a huge pharmaceutical lobbyist. I heard about that too. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, I got another crazy video that we're going to watch here. So, if, if, you know, if you're ready for that, let's see. Oops, sorry. By the way, Doom Nation, follow me on Twitter, Skags89. That's my personal account also. I post way more on there than I do on the Two Doom Men one. I so Twitter. this is Governor Hochul. Again, she is at a uh, church of some sort. And, uh, you know, again, you might think that we're conspiracy theorists, that we say things that are outlandish sometimes. Uh, yeah, this is going to completely prove that we're not. So I'm not sure, you know, listen. And she, that speech, she was like, let, down. let me do, let me say the most obvious pandering things I could possibly come up with in one speech. But holy shit, man, a couple episodes again, we said this was cult shit. What can, how could you watch that video and not tell me that's some sort of fucking cult like behavior? Yeah. The, the one thing I want to make clear is she said, we owe it to each other. We love each other. We want everyone to be safe. No, bitch. That's what you want. Straight up. I don't give a fuck about anyone else other than my loved ones and the people I know and the people that affect me. I, yes, generally, I do not want anyone to die. I don't want anything bad to happen to anyone. But I don't give a, a shit what you do. I'm, I've never met you. I owe you nothing. You owe me nothing. You know what I mean? Like, try, like I said this before. If this pandemic was as deadly as they say it is, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be giving zoo animals COVID shots. We would be killing each other to get to the front of the line. So if it is as bad as they say it is, you wouldn't have to convince anyone because neither of us would care about each other's safety. It'd be who gets to the finish line first. Yeah, I agree with that. If this pandemic was, you know, had the 10, 20% kill rate, like Nick was saying, that they yeah. all, you know, emergency managers feared... And you had a vaccine which had a hundred percent chance of it. If and, you know, if the science showed, if everybody gets this, the the virus will be burnt out and go away. I consider it, but that ain't the fucking situation. No, it ain't. So, and I and and I I don't like people enough myself either to uh <laughs> to right to uh to go out of my way to do something that the benefits are not clear. Uh, you know, for how vague they are with the with the, with all this stuff. But dude, that that speech was so cultish mm. you know first of all i'm not a religious person whatsoever right i sent that video to a friend of mine who's a very religious guy uh a good christian very devout uh really good dude all around and he was disgusted by it you know he goes to church every day he's, he's a good guy real real yeah. christian guy and he's like you don't invoke god's name to to further your political agenda yeah. like that it's it, it disgusted even him that's a new tactic though they they yeah. never bring god into anything anymore and you want to talk about cult shit dude she has her fucking vaccination status on a yeah. chain 
on her neck. You know, I have the Yankee symbol here. Most Catholic people, Christian people have the, the cross on their neck. This bitch has the fucking vaccination status on her neck. I mean, are we for, are we the conspiracy theorists? Or, I mean, this is the governor of New York. We're not conspiracy theorists, dude. These people are not jobs. They're insane. Yeah. I, dude, you know, to become, what was she before? The lieutenant governor of New York? Yeah, the vice president, basically. Yeah. yeah. You don't get into these positions without getting, you know, having dirt and having blood on your hands. She was a puppet long before Como ever turned any, you know, girl into a puppet. You know, so, you know, they knew with her, she knew going into this position that, you know, the shadow puppeteers were just going to mark, bark the orders and she's going to say what she needs to say, wear the next yeah. one she needs to wear it. Like, yeah, that or maybe she's, she wants to like be the governor, like wants to be elected. So she's leaning hard, uh, yeah. hard into, into the, uh, the, you know, the dictatorial, you know, right. aspect of this thinking that. I'll get all the sheep to vote for me and I'll win next time by leaning. That's like her political strategy, maybe. I know, but what she's doing to all the frontline medical workers, yeah, uh, the sad part is, like, New York is like, hell yeah, th this is great. Like, get those nurses out of the, which is crazy because they will tell you to get the vaccine because they care for you and they care about your safety and well-being. But if you're really not going to be on my team, get out of work. I don't want you working yeah. anymore. Make no right. more money. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 yeah, it's it's selective, right? They, they're they're ignoring the other negatives of the situation, which they've done throughout the entire pandemic. Yeah. There's been statistics that have come out recently about childhood obesity is at all time highs, uh, depression, anxiety, yep. suicide, all time highs. And those are let's be real; those are like those are side effects of the of what is going on like the, yeah. the paranoia the behavior around covid and i don't have any numbers i haven't looked this up but i guarantee you if you had if you looked it up and you saw how many deaths are being attributed to like poverty suicide anxiety alcoholism you know like the increase in that and then compare them to the increase in deaths from covid i i bet you they're re if not yeah. the same I bet you the other one is is higher than the COVID deaths. And you don't you don't think all these people losing their jobs that they went to school for for how many years? This good job that's no longer there now. No one's going to become a drug addict, uh, an alcoholic, kill themselves, get wildly depressed, start taking medication. Feed in the problem. How about Feed those? Uh, yeah, you know what? I didn't even think of this, but you just you just made me think of how about those you know healthcare workers that went to school for all those years, and I'm sure they have an absolutely insane amount of uh, college debt, right? That, you know, that they can't now pay back. Now they lose their job. It's even harder to pay it back. That will be another way that they can uh, further the agenda of canceling the debt, which is really just uh, a way to transfer more money to the rich and the elite. You know I mean? It's all interconnected somehow. And they are choosing to do this. They're choosing. Yes, they don't again. Need to they're making the they're manufacturing the crisis. Yeah. I mean, listen, even even if you do believe everyone should get vaccinated, let's think realistically, there's no way you're going to get the country to do 100% of anything. Yeah, never. Biden said 97 and 98%. Spoiler warning people, that is never going to be achievable. You have to ever, fucking ever, ever, vaccinate ever. every single baby as soon as they came out of a womb, like it's, it's never. No, it's not gonna. That's gonna happen. I hate to tell you. I really think that's gonna but, uh, happen. It's 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 ridiculous. Like it's not it's not like logistically possible. Yeah. Even if, even if even if you erased the political aspect of all this and the mistakes that were made, and you had just a situation where everybody was calm, rational, thinking, <laughs> you're never gonna get ninety eight, ninety nine percent of anything. You, you can't even kill her. What is on the fucking back of the Lysol thing? Kills 99.9% .9 of germs. Because there's always that one motherfucker, that one germ, yeah. who ain't going to comply, right? So yeah. it's the same thing for people getting vaccinated. You're never going to get 100%. It, yeah, like I said, spoiler warning. It's not. It's designed this way not to go back to normal. There's always going to be the enemy. And we have this governor now who is just openly choosing to 
take these people's jobs. They're making a, they made the decision to go to college to become a nurse. They made the decision to become a nurse. They made the decision to work during, they could all quit during COVID, but they stayed because they're good nurses. And now they don't get their right to choose what gets put into their body. And well, now we choose for you. I mean, there's also an interesting angle to that too, being that they are healthcare professionals. <laughs> Way oh, smarter than me and you, yeah. Right, yeah. so I mean, why do they not? They, perhaps, they perhaps you know, we stop demanding to do it, and we start asking, why don't you want to do it? Yeah, yeah. Because if you know, if everybody who knows a healthcare provider has asked their healthcare provider thousands of questions over the past year and a half, and these are the people who have been answering them, yeah. And now they're unfit to work. I. I I think Why we would should you rather uh, lose this good job. Why would you rather lose this good yeah, job? I think me and you should try and find a uh, New York state healthcare worker who is, you know, Not basically choosing to lose their job and just, you know, plug their brain. See why. Yeah, well, we'll um, put out this word. Yeah, let's, we'll do it for future episodes. Uh, all right. You want to get on to the next topic, which is uh, uh, Assange? One? Yes. Let's so, I'm going to do some more reading here. So, we have, before we start this, I want to first say that this is going to be a little bit critical of the Trump administration because we're fair and we're not biased. But at the same time, I'm well aware that a lot of stuff that's critical of Trump is complete horse shit, fake news, etc. But I was put onto this article by Edward Snowden, who's my personal hero, one of my heroes. Uh, he doesn't lie about things. Uh, I, I find him to be a pretty, you know, uh, yeah, he has a lot of integrity. So here we go. Kidnapping, assassination, and a London shootout inside the CIA's secret war plans against WikiLeaks. In 2017, as Julian Assange began, began his fifth year hold up in Ecuador's embassy in London, the CIA plotted to kidnap the WikiLeaks founder, spurring heated debate among Trump administration officials over the legality and practicality of such an operation. Some senior inf officials inside the CIA and the Trump administration even discussed killing Assange, going so far as to request sketches or options for how to assassinate him. Discussions over kidnapping or killing Assange occurred at the highest levels of the Trump administration, said a, for a former senior counterintelligence official. There seems to be no boundaries. While Assange had been on the radar of U.S. intelligence agencies for years, these plans for an all-out war against him were sparked by WikiLeaks' ongoing publication of extraordinarily sensitive CIA hacking tools known as Vault 7, uh, which the agency represent said that they, it was basically their largest data loss in CIA history. This is where it gets interesting, and it leads me to believe that it's true. President Trump's newly installed CIA director at the time, Mike Pompeo, was seeking revenge on WikiLeaks and Assange, who had sought refuge in Ecuadorian embassy since 2012 to avoid extradition. Um, Pompeo and other top agency leaders were completely detached from reality because they were so embarrassed about Vault 7, said a former Trump national security official. They were seeing blood. This Yahoo's News investigation, based on conversations with more than 30 former U.S. officials, eight of whom described details of the CIA's proposals to abduct Assange, reveals for the first time one of the most contentious intelligence debates of the Trump presidency and exposes new details about the U.S. government's war on WikiLeaks. It was a campaign spearheaded by Pompeo that bent important legal structures, potentially jeopardized the Justice Department's work towards prosecuting Assange, and risked damaging a damaging episode in the United Kingdom, the United States' closest ally. So they're saying also the CIA is so hell-bent on going after Assange to literally kill him that, that. They, were under, they were undermining and undercutting the Justice Department's uh, like efforts to arrest Assange and bring him in to face trial for whatever right. bullshit they want to make up anyway. So you even have like, ad, like count, like administer, like, uh, these agencies, like count agency beef between each other over how to get rid of this guy. Um, let's see. In late 2017, in the midst of the debate over killing and other ki kidnapping, sorry, the debate over kidnapping and other extreme measures, the agency's plans were upended when U.S. officials picked up the, what they viewed as an alarming report that Russian intelligence operatives were preparing to sneak Assange out of the United Kingdom and speared him away to Moscow. 
keep in mind, that's essentially how Ed Snowden is right. is now a uh, fugitive from justice. He's he's kind of hiding out in Russia. They're providing him, um, you know, like whatever they're providing him uh, somewhere to stay. Protection. They're, Protection, yeah. So they're saying that the Russians were possibly working to get Assange out of the UK, get to Moscow, get away from the CIA. Um, so in response, the CIA and the White House began preparing for a number of scenarios to foil Assange's Russian departure plans. And according to three former officials, those included potential gun battles with Kremlin operatives on the streets of London crashing a car into a Russian diplomatic vehicle transporting Assange and then grabbing him and shooting out the tires of a Russian plane carrying Assange before it could take off for Moscow. U.S. officials asked their British counterparts to do the shooting if gunfire was required, and the British agreed, according to a former senior administration official. I mean, this shit is crazy, dude. They're, they're going to all lengths to, to get this guy. Um I have one final point towards the bottom here to try and be fair to oh, the... this was a long story. Dude, this was an insane article. It's so long. I read the whole thing. Um, so again, some discussions even went beyond kidnapping. U.S. officials had also considered killing Assange, according to three former officials. One of those officials says he was briefed on a spring 2017 mi meeting in which the president asked whether the CIA could assassinate Assange and provide him options for how to do so. So now they're saying... That Trump, Trump was even was asking asking. for give me options of how we could possibly even kill Assange, uh, you know, as one method as opposed to abducting him, uh, taking him in that way. Uh, so now to be fair, none nonetheless, at roughly the same time, agency executives requested and received sketches of plans for killing Assange and other European based WikiLeaks members who had access to these Vault 7 materials. Uh, Yahoo News could not confirm if these proposals made it to the White House. So although the guy before was saying he was a Trump administration official yeah. and the president was asking, Yahoo couldn't confirm if it made it to the White House. Some officials with knowledge of the rendition proposals said they had, they had heard no discussions about assassinating Assange. In a statement to Yahoo News, Trump himself denied that he ever considered having Assange assassinated. It's totally false. It never happened, said Trump. Seemed to ex Trump seemed to express some sympathy for Assange's plight. In fact, I think he's being treated very badly, very badly, he added. So that's as much as I'm going to read. Um, I don't know, obviously. I'm not a fucking CIA op, spook. I don't know what the fuck was going on there. But the moral, I believe it for the most part. I, I think, obviously, they could be taking, they could be using it to take some shots at Trump. But I believe it because this is agency spook shit. And yeah. Assange made the mistake you don't make. He found... It's top secret shit, especially on the CIA. He founded WikiLeaks and based based it off of it. And the government, the CIA, they'll go to whatever lengths they could go to to punish you, to hang you, to make sure that you don't do that, you know, and someone else doesn't do that again. Go ahead. Um, I completely believe the CIA would happily try to kill Assange. Uh, you know, this is an organization that we truly believe doesn't need to answer to anyone you know what i mean like they're, they're not so even embedded. the president yeah they're so embedded around the world and we've known they've committed horrendous acts against humanity on top of that they, they will kill americans to start a war if it means they're gonna get their war hawks flying the whole thing with pinning this on trump i find it weird uh because let's be real there's no biden cia trump cia obama cia CIA, at some extent, has the people that, yeah, works with Trump and Obama, but then there's the other CIA that really is just out there committing, you know, horrendous acts. So I could see it being a shot to throw Trump's name in there to get, you know, people riled up. But it's kind of weird that Trump's name's involved in it, and it's not getting any media coverage. That's true. You know the, I mean? the way I see that, I could see, the you know, I don't know. I could see them having a meeting first of all I, I believe this especially in terms of pompeo because pompeo eventually went on to move his way up in the administration and he was yeah. the cia guy at the time i could see him you know you you, you uh you shit on my organization i'm gonna come back yeah. guns blazing and get yeah. my revenge on you um i could also see in a cabinet meeting in the white house trump just and being like 
Well, them being like, Mr. President, this guy, he leaked information that's, you know, puts America at risk. We got to get rid of him. You know, it's, it's for, that's what we best advise you to do. We could probably take him off the board. What do you think? Yeah, you know, if he's bad, get rid of him. See what you could do. Give me a plan. I'll see. You know what I mean? Like, do I think Trump was like, hey, 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 behind like a, a, a secret plan to assassinate Assange? No. But do I think he might have entertained the thought or the proposal of we could assassinate this guy as it was sold to him as being like a critical matter of national security? Yeah, I, I believe that. Definitely. That could that could have happened. I got I got two things. So I, I actually like Mike Pompeo, um, but, you know, he was always a good Trump guy. But, you know, not to be biased, you don't even in Trump's administration, you don't get appointed the head of the CIA without doing the dirt. So yeah. I'm the skeletons in Pompeo's closet. He must have a house full of closets and bones piled from the floor to the ceiling if you made it to the head of the CIA. So I, I wouldn't put that past him that he'd be interested in killing Assange. But the other thing that like I separate Trump from this, and I'm really not trying to be biased, but let's be real. Like the CIA didn't like JFK and JFK died. You know, he was eventually assassinated. We, I'm not saying the CIA did it, but the CIA didn't like him and he died. If the CIA could kill, kidnap and kill Julian Assange at one and kill uh, kidnap and kill Trump at 115. There'd be burgers on the grill by 129. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if they could get it done in the same day, they would. You know, like, you're not going to tell me the most hated man in the history of the world that has been villainized that there hasn't been plans to assassinate him. Uh, Pelosi maybe calling him across her desk. It'd be, Whoever. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there was. It'd be too on the nose, though. You know? Yeah. Well, that was the one thing I always said. If anybody ever tried to kill Trump, like everyone yeah. would like, there'd be no one else to suspect. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, exactly. You know, another thing too is they've lied to him before. It's been proven yeah. with the troop levels in Afghanistan. They lied to him about that. And like, that goes back to what we're saying. These agencies are beyond even the, you know, the control well, of the president. What about, I think we, me and you were listening to Tim Pool one time and they were talking about how everybody was saying how big of a fool, uh, George Bush was that he didn't know what was going on half the time. You don't think the CIA used that to get yeah. around for what they yes. wanted to do? I'm, uh, yeah, interestingly enough, I'm reading, uh, or is this right here? I'm reading right now the book that Scott Horton advised me to read, Bush at War, which right. goes into the uh, days after 9 11 and uh, the beginning. And yeah, the CIA was deeply involved in everything. And the, uh, and uh, I, I'm thinking of doing a Doom review about it, so I don't want to uh, really give too much yeah. away by the beginning. But, but yeah, of course, the CIA is involved in all that sort of stuff, advising the president, backroom deals, yeah. etc. That's what I mean, like to call it like Trump CIA. It's the CIA. They, they, no president right. has ever owned the CIA. Yeah. There's been a few presidents. There's probably been more presidents that have been owned by the CIA than there have been presidents that have owned the CIA. Yeah, definitely, man. And um, so, so one one of the main, like like South Park here, right? What's the moral of the story? Um, the way I see this is, why should you give a shit about Julian Assange, right? Well, Julian Assange is a whistleblower at the end of the yeah. day, right? And saw shit he didn't like, and he whistle blew on it, right? Yep. Just like a few weeks ago when James O'Keefe, or well, yeah, well, they're great at it too, right? But. He's going to face accountability, Julian Assange, for whistleblowing on the government. That same government is going to do what they did a few weeks ago. Drone strike, predator drone strike, kill 10 civilians in Afghanistan, children, women, lie about it. Later on, it comes out that it was women and children, not ISIS-K people. No one's even going to get a slap on the wrist. No, no. one's going to, no one's even going to get a fine. Yeah. From their from their pay from their paycheck, right? But you whistleblow on them, they will fucking plan to kill you. Not even joking. Yeah, I just I, read like ten minutes of a fucking article yeah. showing how they were planning on killing a guy, whistleblowing yeah. on them. But if they kill people and it gets outed that they kill people, ah, sorry, we made a mistake. Yeah. No, no accountability. Yeah, I could tell you James O'Keefe's life is definitely on the line for Project Veritas. There's people out there that want to kill him. Whistleblowing is frowned upon. I'm surprised 
that he's still getting people to blow the whistle because it'd be very easy to make some of these no name if they're not actors, you know what I mean? If you're going to actually believe who they are to just disappear. Those know? guys are, are fucking wizards at whatever yeah. they do. I think they get, I think Project Veritas gets people to uh, open up like that. First of all, they liquor them up, which is a great <laughs> social lubricant. Second of all, I think they get them to like go on dates and shit. I think like they put the pretty girl with the big boobs in front of the scientist from, from Johnson and Johnson they get the guy liquor it up, and you ask him a couple questions. It's a little deceptive, but at the same time, that's God's work. You know what I mean? So, I, I tell you, I wish <laughs> I knew that their office was only like 15, 20 minutes away from me because I would have been there with my resume pounded on the door every day. Yeah, well, now it's completely destroyed yeah. from that rainstorm. It'll be back. Had. It'll be back. Yeah, man. So I thought that was an insane um, it is. article. It is. Uh, like I said, you know, you make what you want of it. Believe it. Don't believe it. I don't know. I believe it because it's from Edward Snowden. I trust yeah. him. And um, the CIA uh, would happily kill anyone. Yeah, right. It's not yeah, out better, of the possibility. You know you what I mean? Be like, careful. You're you're in DC right that's now. That's true. Right. If I get here knock, I better put that the uh, the bolt on the door. Yeah. Maybe put the mattress on the floor so they can't shoot through the window or something. Not a bad idea. Yeah, I'll do what they did at the Capitol. I'll put a Cheeto in the. Uh, in the in the door frame that'll keep them out that's the uh, security yeah. if they had the capital on uh, one six i'll do that maybe there we go all right all right that's been another episode doom nation yes make sure you guys like share and subscribe as always check us out on our link tree at to do men uh it brings you to everywhere you can find us all of our social media you can find us on all the major podcasting platforms thank you guys hope you yes. had a great time we got an interesting episode coming up after this one. We are having oh, on. Yes. Yes. Uh, flat Earth Dave, we are having on. Uh, me and Captain are not flat, flat earthers. Think the whole thing is completely bullshit. But we're going to hear about Flat Earth Dave, see what um, he's got to say. At this point, yeah, go ahead. I know what you're going to say. Go ahead. At, at this point, I'm going in open minded. <laughs> I got questions, and I'm see? not completely sold that the Earth isn't flat anymore. Because after. We, we live in an upside-down world. I mean, right. if the world's, it might as well be flat if it's going to be upside-down. I, I I had a feeling you were going to say something like that, and I kind of feel the same way. It might as well, at this point, we might as well talk to a fucking flat earther. Well, yeah. you know, what do we got to lose? Yeah. Taxes are still going to go up. And don't right, right. <laughs> All right. Later, Donation. Donation, peace.